Hey, it's Silver. This is Toho New World. So I really like looking at Toho fan games, to be honest. I just, I think the universe is fun and I like the characters and I think that uh, people are very creative oftentimes in making some really interesting stuff in this world. So here we are taking a look at another one. And this is actually made by a development team that has previously made another fan game by the name of Scarlet Curiosity. And this game is basically Scarlet Curiosity 2.0. It's taking the sort of foundation that that game laid and building up on it a little bit to create something similar, but still new. This is an action RPG. It is stage based. You have a sort of world map of Gensokyo that you uh, walk around on. And You've got these various symbols on the map that you can walk up to to do stages. And you have a sort of linear progression of story stages marked by these red symbols. And then you have these green ones, which are side quests. And uh, side quests are usually worth doing because they can give you some really nice stuff and a bunch of money and things like that. And also usually have some pretty funny dialogue and things. So they're always worth checking out. And uh, in this game, you play as either Reimu or Marisa. You have a choice of either one, so a shrine maiden or a witch. And uh, they each have their own sets of skills and uh, their own types of weapons and things that they'll find. And overall, the game itself is pretty simple. It is actually very simple, I would say. It doesn't have pretty much any extraneous mechanics or anything. Like, for instance, there's no crafting or anything like that, no material gathering. It is a very sort of pure action RPG that is, I think, meant to be kind of casual fun and not too complicated, which is, to be fair, kind of unusual for Toho fan games because the mainline Toho games are generally considered very, very difficult. Oftentimes, fan games are also very complicated and or difficult, especially the RPGs and the side scrollers and things like that they tend to be like crushingly hard sometimes but uh, this game is very much going in the opposite direction by simplifying everything and going for a much more pure setup that's kind of like a hack and slash kind of formula more or less after you choose your character, you'll have a couple of basic attacks. You have just a simple melee attack but with the equipped weapon. So in Reimu's case, it is her spirit stick thingy. I forget what they're called. <laughs> the stick with the white tassels on it. And uh, in Marisa's case, it's of course her broom. And uh, this is just a simple multi-hit combo. Nothing fancy, no like spectacle fighter or mechanics or anything like that. Just a basic melee weapon that you can mix into the rest of your moveset. You also have a dash, which is not a dodge, it's more of like a sprint. It doesn't give you iframes or anything like that, but you have to press the attack button to do it, which is a little bit odd. And then you have a jump, and the jump is your dodge. I don't think it has iframes either, but that's for a reason, because some enemies will deploy projectiles and attacks that are very tall, and that's of course to prevent you from jumping over them. So it's used as a dodge for like single layer projectiles and things, stuff that you can actually clear by jumping. It is very useful and uh, absolutely necessary in, of course, the uh, boss fights and stuff because, of course, those do become bullet hell, so you do need to be able to actually jump over large fields of projectiles in order to survive. You've also got a guard button. This is also important because it has a sort of witch time-like mechanic where uh, if you press the guard button just before you get hit, it will slow down time and you'll prevent any damage. So it's very useful and very powerful. And the guard is pretty low risk because it has like a tiny cooldown, like about a half a second cooldown or so. So you can use it pretty frequently. And even if you miss guarding an attack, there might be a chance to guard a second time and actually get the timing right before the attack goes off. Uh, enemies will have this sort of blue circle around them if they're about to do a guard guardable attack and those blue circle ones are the ones that give you the time slow effect and then there are attacks with red circles that are unblockable but uh, these are the ones that you gotta jump over basically or weave between but trying to block them is actually even worse than failing to dodge them <laughs> because if you just try to jump or something but miss and end up taking a hit you'll take damage but if you try to block one of these it'll break your guard still do full damage and kind of stun you in place for a second which could lead you to getting hit again so you definitely do not want to try and guard these pay attention to the colored flashes before an enemy attacks to know the best way to deal with them You've also got a heal on the left trigger. You start with only one charge of this heal, and it is a relatively powerful heal, but not like major. I, I'm not entirely sure. It's like 25 or 30% HP, something like that. You know, it's a, it's a nice chunk, but if you're really critically low, it's not going to get you like super back in the green or anything. It's a, a very useful heal to have, of course, during boss fights and things, but you can't rely on it to keep you alive if you're taking tons and tons of hits because your damage will eventually outpace it since it's not a massive heal, and it's on quite a long cooldown. So you can't spam this heal. It is usable as many times as you want, it's not limited in terms of uses, it's just got a really long cooldown. And in addition to all this, you've also got four different attacks that you can equip, and these are your sort of bread and butter, the things that you're mixing into your melee combos to do more damage. You've got three basic skills, and then you've got a spell, which is a, like a spell card kind of thing. 
It's got bomb above it to let you know that it's like a more limited use thing. And this is a very powerful but very long cooldown spell of some kind that are usually like signature spells to that character. Like for instance, Marisa has her Master Spark as one of these. Naturally, it's the one I use because it's awesome. Despite the fact that it says bomb, you're not limited like bombs in traditional Toho games. You don't have like a nor uh, limited number of uses of it or anything like that. You can use it as many times as you can in a battle. There's no bomb limit. It's just got a super long cooldown. Uh, your other three abilities also have cooldowns, but they're usually much shorter. Each one has a bit of a different one, but they're usually within the span of like two to four seconds-ish. So, I mean, some of them get a little bit longer than that, but that's about average. And these are the ones that I was talking about mixing into your melee combos and stuff. And a lot of them are also projectiles, so you'll want to use these at range to deal a lot more damage and they tend to be much more powerful than your melee attack as well. So you've got uh, various kinds of projectiles, beams, throwable concoctions, and all sorts of other skills like that. Again, generally things that are sort of related to that character, something that is signature to them, something that is involved in like a spell card they use in one of the games, stuff like that. And uh, these are your various fancy spells that you can throw out and you tend to be able to use these very often because of their uh, small cooldowns. This means that these, like I said earlier, are like your bread and butter attacks. You want to set these and uh, use them all the time in order to really up your damage. Enemies do drop experience when they die, and uh, the experience is meant to look like the collectible sort of score items in the mainline Toho games. But uh, yeah, that's actually XP little cubes that fall out of all the enemies. and. You do level up in this game. As you level up, of course, your base stats will go up, and you also can unlock more skills, because uh, even though you can have four equipped, you have more than that total that you can actually choose from. So you can pause the game at any time and go to your skills menu and equip the choice of your three skills and your one spell card uh, however you want, based on the ones that you've unlocked. And there's not like a massive variety of these, I definitely would have liked to see more, but it does add a little bit of extra variety to the combat to be able to spice it up by creating your own little set of spells and stuff. And also, as you use your normal non-spell card skills, they gain experience and level up, and leveled up skills just get stronger in general, but they also sometimes add extra effects, like Marisa's magic missiles casting multiple times, depending on how many uh, times you've leveled up and some other things like that. Your uh, spell card skills, the big high cooldown ones, those don't level up from uses, but there will be certain uh, side quests you can do that will actually progress the levels of all of the ones you've learned. So that's actually how you power them up, is doing side quests, which is an, an interesting way to do it, and a really good uh, reward to hold as a side quest is, you know, to make some of your most powerful attacks even stronger. You've also got three different equipment slots. You have a weapon, a uh, sort of body armor slot, and an accessory. That's all you get, but that's generally enough because it does the job. Your weapon is, of course, generally going to affect your attack power and all the, the power of your spells and stuff, as well as other things like crit chance and the like. Your armor is going to mostly affect your maximum health, but there are some other stats that they also contribute to. And your accessory can be just about anything and tend to be just supplementary effects compared to everything else. But pretty much everything is just stats. You're not going to find items with fancy effects or items that like change your skills into something else or anything like that. They're basically just stat sticks. You'll also notice from the beginning you're earning these things called strength stones, and this is because after a certain point in the game, you go to hell by the way, after a certain point in the game when you get back from hell, you uh, unlock this machine that allows you to spend strength stones to permanently improve certain stats directly. So you can improve like your attack and your drop rate, and you can also get more uh, healing charges, so you can have up to like four heals stacked at once with these strength stones. So that's kind of like your more mid-game improvement system that's uh, supplementary to the levels you're gaining by doing missions. There are a lot of mission types that you'll come across, but for the most part they involve exploring various areas in Gensokyo and fighting lots of, uh, you know, your traditional like yokai and fairy style enemies that are often present in Toho games. They also like to use things like barriers and switches so that uh, certain parts of the level will be blocked off until you find switches to unblock them and allow you to kind of explore the level that way. So it gives you a kind of multi-branch level with a lot of ways to go, but eventually you'll find that some of them terminate in these force fields that you can't pass yet, and that helps you still have large levels while also making a pretty uh, direct, explorable path so that the player knows where to go next because there's only some areas where they can actually explore until they find the switches for those barriers. Levels also tend to end in boss fights, and these are the shining moment of the game. The boss fights are actually really fun, and uh, this is, of course, very standard for almost anything Toho-related. The boss fights tend to be the best part, and in that case, they definitely are here. The normal uh, combat is fine, but not challenging at all, and uh, it gets pretty repetitive pretty quickly because of the low skill variety and things, but it does the job. However, the boss fights are an event. You have 
a mix between classic Toho characters that you'll recognize if you're a fan of this series in general, you know, all the characters that you've met before in the games, but you've also got some other unexpected bosses that are not normal characters, like a giant crab or a tank, like an actual facts tank. So there's a certain level of, like, absurdity going on with the boss fights that makes them really enjoyable, and the uh, bosses tend to have very complex bullet patterns and all sorts of attacks thrown and things, and really that's where the combat comes alive. It's the most interesting part of the game by far, and although I was never, like, super challenged by these bosses, I never found any of them difficult. I've never actually died in the game at all. It's definitely an easy game. It's on the, the easiest side of Toho fan game for sure. I also think that that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's clearly designed that way on purpose, and uh, I'm not going to wish it was more challenging or whatever because I can see that it's going for this more casual sort of like light action RPG kind of experience that's meant to be sort of a light-hearted fun time and I get that. Also, I should mention, by the way, the music is great. Uh, this is also another thing that tends to be the case with Toho games, both official and fan-made, where the music is awesome. And in this case, yeah, it is very good music, very memorable stuff. A lot of really good, like, boss theme remixy kind of stuff and things of that nature. It's a it's a really good soundtrack, honestly. And I think, personally, the music reminds me a lot of, like, PlayStation 2-era JRPGs. Uh, that's just kind of the, the vibe that it gives me. So personally, although I would say Toho New World is not for me, because I tend to like my action RPGs with more in-depth mechanics, more complexity, more challenge. That's just how I play RPGs. That's what I personally prefer. But me saying that is not dogging on the game and saying that it's bad just because it's not for me. In fact, I think it's actually a pretty well-realized game. I think it's got really nice music. It's got a good set of mechanics that maybe get too repetitive too quickly, but are still well made and uh, make sense together and nothing extraneous that doesn't need to be there and also I'm a fan of the art style because it's got this sort of adorable uh, tilt shift photography look to everything which I quite like and of course like I mentioned the music being a uh, definite standout as well so this is the kind of game that I can both say is not really my thing but also say it might be your thing and is actually worth playing if it looks interesting to you because it does do a pretty good job of the formula that it sets out to create it's just not a formula that's for me i don't think so that has been my look at toho new world it's a pretty adorable casual action rpg i will put the link in the description below this video to the steam store page so that you can go and check it out on your own time thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you next time